Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and I'm cracking a pack. Today is pack number five in the Magic the Gathering Corset 2014 Fat Pack Bingo. Check out my preview video for the explanation on how the Corset 2014 Fat Pack Bingo will work. I've added the link to the preview video in the description below. So here is my bingo card, and after four packs, no bingo. We have gotten one Shadowborn Apostle, so if we get a second one, I can mark that off. So hopefully, I'm going to hit one of these bingo spaces, and we're going to get two of them marked off, the free and hopefully one of these other ones. So as I uh, you know, get ready to open this pack, let me stress that I'm a very casual, casual Magic the Gathering player. So, I mean, my viewpoint on these cards are going to be from a very casual viewpoint. I think it's a pretty cool way to rate the cards. So after the pack, uh, after I open the pack, I'm gonna choose the best card of the pack. Maybe you might agree, maybe you won't, but at least it's gonna be fun. So we're down to five more, five through nine. So hopefully um, I'm gonna get something I can mark off bingo. Okay, so let's get ripping into this pack and get some bingo magic going here. All right, first card out of the pack. It's going to be Smelt. So for one red, instant, destroy target artifact. Um, you know, in red, if you're playing a mono red deck, this is suitable. Um, usually, I like to try to get something more than just destroying a target artifact. Um, I prefer, you know, if I'm going to get something that will destroy an, uh, an artifact, maybe a creature and it has an Enter to the Battlefield ability where it destroys that target artifact. On its own, for one mana, it's not bad. But if you're facing someone that's not playing artifacts, it's not great. Okay, next card, Negate. One in a blue, instant counter target non-creature spell. I think I've already talked about Negate in one of the previous videos. I like Negate. Um, I feature Negate in quite a few decks uh, that I play. Um, I like playing blue, I like playing control, so Negate fits right in there. Next card, Child of Night, one and a black uh, vampire that's a 2-1 with life link. So Child of Night has been reprinted plenty of times. In fact, it was reprinted in the either Guilds of Ravnica, I think it was Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance. Um, it's a utility creature, 2-1 for 2 with life link. Uh, you put some sort of equipment or an R on it, make it bigger, and it can deal some damage. Lay of the Land, one green, sorcery, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Um, mana Ramping Wise, this isn't a card that I want to play. Um, it doesn't net me an additional land on the battlefield. Uh, obviously, cards like Cultivate or Kadoma's Reach are pretty good. Um, even in Magic Origins, uh, Nissa's Pilgrimage, I think is the name of the card that had Spell Mastery. That's a card I'd be interested in playing. Paying a little bit extra mana, putting a land onto the battlefield, another one in my hand. That's the way I want to go. Lightning Talons, uh, three mana, two and a red, enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus three, plus one has first strike. So um, I don't mind playing this uh, because it's going to give my creature a first strike. So more than likely, it's going to be tough to block. Uh, what I don't like about it, obviously with any aura, is it does something when it comes in the battlefield, but if my creature gets bounced or killed, then I got two for one. Nephalia Sea Kite, four mana, three and a blue. Uh, it's a bird. It's a two, three. It's got flash and flying. So this looks like something that got left over from the um, Innistrad block. I don't know if it was originally printed in Innistrad. It may have been in Innistrad or Avacyn Restored. It's a flyer I don't mind a common. Uh, you flash it in, you got a 2-3 flyer. Its butt's a little bit bigger. It can block some things, um, deal some damage. Though usually for a flash flyer, I'm looking for a little bit of an added ability, maybe an enter the battlefield effect. Death Gaze Cockatrice. Four mana, two and two black. You get a 2-2 flyer with death touch. I think in my previous video, number four, I reviewed this. Once again, it's a flyer that I don't mind. Um, it's a little under cost with a 2-2 body, but with Death Touch, it's going to block anything and kill it, so it's an okay creature. Active Treason, I reviewed this in a previous video, and I think in the first or second uh, pack out of the, the, the box. 
Three mana, two and a red, sorcery, gain control, target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn. So I talked about it mainly from casual builds. In draft, I really like this, especially if I'm playing red. I've won a couple of games where I've played this effect. Um, it was kind of right down to the wire. I had one more turn or I was going to die. Uh, opponent, you know, attacked in. I let my life total go down. Maybe they had one uh, attacker left back uh, that had summoning sickness. I use this still their, their creature attacking for the win on my turn. Wild guess. Oh, we're seeing some very, it's almost repetitive. If you go and see pack number four, you're going to see, I think, a lot of similar cards. Uh, two red sorcery has an additional cost to cast wild guess. Discard a card, draw two cards. Um, yeah, I don't like the rummaging ability. I'm much more into something like Faithless faithless looting or thrill of possibility or um oh um tormenting voice uh i'd rather use it instant instead of sorcery and that's where like thrill of possibility and, and faithless looting are a little bit higher on my list pillar filled ox four mana three and a white you get an ox and it's two four and it's vanilla yeah not even in my most uh Stall you out on the ground, heat you in the air, flyers deck. Do I want to play this? I think there's quite a few other cards that can do a lot of work versus Pillar Field Ox. Okay, encroaching wastes. So our first uncommon. Um, it's a land. You can tap it and add one colorless to your mana pool, or you can pay for, tap it, sacrifice it, and destroy target non basic land. So a little bit more expensive than like a Ghost Quarter or um, some of the other similar effects. Uh, I don't know that I've ever played with this card. I myself hate having my lands destroyed, so I'm not a big fan of destroying other players' lands. So it's not necessarily a card that I play, and I think that there's probably other cards, even at a budget, so Field of Ruins that you can pick up that do this and, and, and have a little bit cheaper cost. Our next uncommon is Doomblade, one in a black. Destroy target, none, black creature at instant. I like Doomblade. I play Doomblade in quite a few decks. Um, you know, it's kind of a bummer when you're playing someone that's playing a mono black deck or they've got a black creature and you can't destroy it. Oh well, Doomblade does enough work that I'm a fan of it and, you know, I play it just about in any black deck that I have. Okay, our final in common, Barrage of Expendables. For one red, it's an enchantment. You can pay a red, sacrifice a creature. Barrage of Expendables deals one damage to target creature or player. Sure, this is a repeatable effect. I suppose if you put a lot of uh, goblin tokens out or other small creatures, you know, you're going to do a series of damage equal to the number of mountains you have available to tap. Um, I'm not in on this. Uh, I like Goblin Grenade um, and other cards with similar effects where I'm going to sacrifice the creature, like fling, and then I'm going to fling it at, uh, you know, my opponent. Or Goblin Grenade is in a Goblin deck that I play. I play a play set of them, and it's an easy way just to deal five damage by sacrificing a Goblin. Um, I don't really see this as being something that I would play or replace any of my current red decks that utilize the similar sort of effect um, but I see that it could have some build around possibilities okay we still have not been able to hit any of the bingo square so hopefully our rare is something that will hit a bingo square and our rare is witch stalker so we are still without uh, hitting one of our rares here or bingo sorry bingo squares witch stalker is one and two green for a wolf it's a three three it's got hex proof and whenever an opponent casts a blue or black spell during your turn put a plus one plus one counter on witch stalker um so you know this is in the series of green hate cards where you put it out there and depending upon how your opponent interacts or the deck that they've got you know witch stalker can get a little bit bigger they can't target it so it's going to stick on the battlefield and if they're targeting your other stuff at instant speed on your turn, you know, it's it's going to have Witch Stalker grow. If Witch Stalker had Trample, that would be great. But as is, it's not that bad of a card. It's around 60, 65 cents in value. I've never played with it, but in 
uh, some of my mono green builds, I could see playing this card just to thwart some of the blue or black decks that I face. Okay, and then we've got a mountain and a adver an advertisement card. All right, um, best card or favorite card of the pack is easy for me, Doomblade. As I said before, I really like Doomblade. Um, it is a key card that I put in a lot of my decks. Um, it stinks if you have to play someone that's got black creatures or playing a black deck, but more often than not, that's a certain percentage of opponents or decks you're going to play. Doomblade is efficient for one in a black. You can destroy just about any threat that's on the other side of the board. Well, um, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Take some time to tell me in the comments section what was your favorite or best card out of the pack. Until next time when I crack pack number six in my Magic the Gathering corset 2014 at Pack Bingo.